All right, it is the last day of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the United States and what is about to happen in an hour from now uh, is a function at the White House where, which, which, will generate, uh, which will generate headlines, as it were. Uh, it will begin with the India-US high-tech handshake event at the White House. We are counting down to that. It starts at 9 p.m. This, uh, this is where CEOs of top tech companies in the United States will be meeting the Prime Minister one-on-one. -on -one. This will be followed by the State Department luncheon. Later in the evening, the Prime Minister will attend a diaspora event at the Ronald Reagan Center and then leave for Egypt. Now, as part of this high-tech handshake event, Prime Minister Modi will be meeting the CEOs of top tech companies, including Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, ChatGTP's parent company, OpenAI, and much more. He will also be meeting, very importantly, the Boeing CEO. Their meeting is crucial as it comes only a day after Boeing announced a hundred million investment in India's infrastructure and programs to train pilots. It also comes right after Air India placed orders with Boeing for over 200 jets, including 190 737 MAX narrow-body aircrafts, 20 Dreamliners, and 10 others. I'm going straight across to Nirupava Rao. She's a former Foreign Secretary of India. She's joining us on the broadcast. Uh, uh, good evening to you, Nirupama Ji. Good to have you here on Mirror Now. First things first, uh, we still don't have the pictures from White House. They'll only come to us uh, at around 9 o'clock in the evening, which is an hour from now, uh, when the Prime Minister's first event for the day starts. Uh, but I want to ask you what you make uh, of the Prime Minister's visit so far. Look at the diversity of people he's met. Look at the diversity of deals that have been signed. Uh, many people have been saying this is about China, the growing relationship between India and China. China has an uh, 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 India and the US has an eye on China, but to me it looks like it's more than just that. Uh, thank you, Shreya, for having me on the show. Uh, if you ask me what the importance of the visit is, and this is of course a high-level official state visit, the US rarely does these kinds of visits, and this is a great honor accorded to our Prime Minister. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But what is the underlying importance of the visit? I think, for one, it clearly signals that the India-U.S. relationship has come of age, that there is a mature understanding between our two leaders and our two governments, that there is strategic convergence, and that there, there is, and this is important, that there is willingness to understand each other's points of view on the global situation, which may not always coincide and that areas of difference in perspectives need not detract from the overall strength and substance of the bilateral relationship between these two very large, very important democracies. So I think that is, some, that is what I take away from this visit. The US bet, if you can call it that, on India is very clear, it's been reaffirmed, and India is seen as a very dependable, and trusted partner, an equal partner, a reliable and responsible partner. And from that flow, the momentous decisions you've seen, the political will on the part of the Americans to engage in a strategic technology partnership with India, the Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, which is led by the NSAs of the two countries, uh, all the breakthroughs you've seen on defense and security, the, the sale of the, uh, sorry, the, the memorandum of understanding on the GF414 jet engines, which will now be supplied to India, possibly manufactured in India once all the, all the uh, arrangements have been put in place. And on cutting edge sectors like AI, like quantum, like space, like semiconductors. So this is not a relationship, you know, you don't, we're not starry eyed about it. Let's look at it as a relationship founded on mm. pragmatism. It's founded on realism and a hardcore recognition on the part of both countries on the need to strengthen security and deterrence in the Indo-Pacific Indo and all that it takes to achieve that goal. Uh, Nirupama ji, correct me if I'm wrong, but the United States of America is not used to partners who are not allies. And India, for the moment, is not an ally of the United States of America. Uh, do you think that is changing, that, that, that this is then a different kind of partnership? 
You know, this is not an era really of alliances. Now, alliances were a very uh, mid 20th century phenomenon in many ways. And since then, so much water has flown under the uh, geopolitical bridge, as it were. You've seen the end of the Cold War. You know, the only uh, new uh, alliance, if you can call it, is between uh, China and Pakistan. And that is not really, uh, it's more of an infamous mm. partnership, if I may call it that. So today, you know, when you talk of a trusted, consequential, defining partnership between India and the United States, in many ways, it speaks of two countries who are naturally aligned with each other, not only on the basis of values, but also on the basis of interests. So there's nothing I think that is that we should uh, have any need to quarrel with the definition of this relationship as a very trusted, consequential, defining, comprehensive, global, strategic partnership. Uh, Ji, before I let you go, uh, we've seen some lo lovely photo ops. I want to ask you, what's been the highlight for you as far as this, uh, you know, as far as this visit is concerned? Well, I think the highlight is the, of course, it's wonderful to see the way people in both countries have built a bridge between our two democracies. And I think that is really something that provides so much hope and a sense of resurgent belief that we all should possess about the direction this relationship is taking. When you see the pictures of Prime Minister Modi and the Bidens, you know, exchanging gifts, when you see how the Bidens have gone out of their way uh, to make Mr. Modi so welcome in Washington and to the White House, the private dinner, the meeting between Mr. Modi and Dr. Jill Biden on education partnerships, and of course, the state dinner, uh, the welcome on the, uh, the White House lawns for Mr. Modi and the presence of a large uh, number of um, members or, or representatives of the Indian diaspora at the welcome ceremony. I think that was something that really provided a lot of hope and, and you know, went beyond the spectacle of just, you know, the prime minister's, uh, the state visit and the protocol associated with it. And I think the other aspect that impressed me about it is the content and substance of what the outcomes of this visit have been. And this is this relates to technology, as I mentioned earlier, as a pillar of the partnership, as a core of the partnership. And, uh, and you know, this, I think, is something that, also provides a lot of hope for the future, something that the United States and India have not really, you know, we've not really been able to breach that barrier in the past, this barrier of high technologies, of critical technologies being provided uh, to India in order to strengthen our own not only our defense, but our industrial and manufacturing complex, creating so many jobs, just as, you know, the purchase of Boeing aircraft from Air India um, uh, by Air India is creating, is going to create so many jobs in the United States. So there's two-way investment between the two countries. So as I said before, mm. this is a relationship of equals. This is a relationship that is that is trusted and it's resilient most importantly. And it is a relationship that is going to provide a new balance of freedom in the Indo-Pacific. Nirupama ji, always good to have you on the show. Good to get your perspective. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time here on Mirror Now. Good to see you. Thank you so much.